In this video, we are going to take a look at async actions in Redux. I've got a simple setup here. I've got a user reducer. I've got our store with a logger middleware. I've got some HTML elements, and then I have my get state, and I've got an action dispatch here. And obviously I subscribe to my store. Now, obviously this doesn't do anything because it's just completely broken, but this is just kind of the basic boilerplate that we need to show exactly how async actions work in Redux. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to outline the steps that we take when we do an async action. So async action. So the first thing we do is we dispatch an action and that's a Redux action. So we do dispatch and then we pass in the action and the type. So that might be of type get user. We then do the XHR request. So we ask an API for something and we get some data back. When we get that data back, we handle that response. So we handle the response. And that response is either gonna be a success or it's gonna be an error, a failure. And we then dispatch another action. So that might be of type received user. So with those steps outlined, let's go ahead and dispatch an async action. So when we dispatch an async action in Redux, rather than passing that action straight to the store, like we do with synchronous actions, we actually pass a function. And in that function, we pass the dispatch. So dispatch. And that's gonna be the function that we call inside our store.dispatch. Curly braces, and uh, let me just take that down there. So with that function now, we have access to that dispatch method. So we can dispatch our Redux actions. So now we've seen sort of the basic steps of an async action in Redux. The best way to think about it, it's just a sequence of synchronous steps, essentially. So we do one synchronous action and we then do another synchronous action. That's the way it's kind of thought of in, in Redux. And in order to do this and to use async actions in Redux, we need to import another middleware. So head on back over to your terminal and npm install redux dash thunk that's just save. And that's what we need to use in order to use asynchronous actions in Redux. So let's just go ahead and import our thunk middleware from redux-thunk. I'm not gonna explain exactly what a thunk is um, as it's a little bit of a complicated topic. I will do a separate video on that itself. So look out for that. So I've just added a get user case here to my reducer just to make sure it's not broken. And we can go ahead and pass in that middleware to our apply middleware function. I've also commented out my render and store subscribe, just because we don't need to use those at the moment. Obviously, we don't have any state or anything, so that's just going to throw an error. So save that. npm start your server again. Open up your web browser and refresh. And we should be able to click the button and get a series of actions dispatched. And we can see here we get our get user action and our received user action. And they are dispatched from a single store.dispatch. So we can dispatch multiple actions at once and we can handle asynchronous actions. So let's just go ahead and handle our API fetch. We're gonna just fetch some random user data. So if you head on over to randomuser.me in your browser, you'll be able to see the API we're gonna use. And it just generates some random data. And we're just gonna use that to get some random data to put into our application. There's just one more thing we need to install before we can go ahead and do our API call. And that is something to do the API call for us. And the library I'm gonna use is called Axios. So npm install dash dash save axios and that's a pretty popular one so if you look at the npm here axios promise based http client for the browser and node.js 
and you can see it's got quite a lot of downloads and it's one of the most popular ones. You could use fetch or something similar, but I'm just gonna use Axios. Let's go ahead and npm start and let's import Axios from Axios, excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and make our request. After we have done our initial dispatch, so our get user dispatch, we are gonna do the request. And we do that by saying axios.get, and then we pass in the URL, which for this API is https colon forward slash forward slash random user dot me forward slash api forward slash and that will give us some random user data and then we're going to go ahead and handle these responses so the first one is going to be our success response so dot then our response not our response our response pass that to our function equals not a minus and then within inside this then we have our response and we are simply going to dispatch a type and a payload. So our type in this case is going to be user received as this is a success. And for this particular API, the payload is going to be in response dot data, I believe could be wrong. We'll check in a minute. And then we go ahead and handle the error. So if we get an error, we're gonna catch that error, pass that error, get it to a function, and we're gonna dispatch another action that has the type of, just call it error for the moment, and the payload will be error. We should now be able to go ahead and make this request in our browser. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this type here at the bottom to after async action. So we can see that this action actually happens before our response comes back. Head on over to the browser, refresh, click the new random user button, and we should be able to see what has happened. So we can see we have our first get user action, which is sending our request to the API. We then have our after async action, so the last action that we dispatched, and then we then get our user back. So that's when we receive our user and our payload. And that payload is gonna have all of our data in it. And it's actually on results, payload.results. So I'll pass that rather than data. So payload.result. So you can see there that the first action that happened was our get user, we then sent our Axios request to the API, but we then dispatched our after async action because this request hasn't yet been fulfilled. Once this request came back, once it was fulfilled, we then dispatched our user received action. So we first had the get user, we then sent our request, which took some time to come back. In that meantime, we dispatched another action. Once this request came back, once we got the response, we then dispatched our user received action. So you can see that it kind of feels synchronous, but it is actually async, which is great. Let's quickly wire up our reducer so we can make our application work. So we've got our get user case. And before we do that, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and create some initial state. So let's have a constant of initial state. And that's an object make that space and in that object we're going to have a sending request which is going to be false and we'll turn that to true when we're sending our request request received which is going to be false as well we're then going to have a user and we will default this user to just blank strings for now email blank string and gender blank string we're then going to have a status again a blank string and we'll have a status class with a blank string just to make our application look a bit nicer we'll then use some ES6 to pass in that initial state to 
our reducer like so and we can go ahead and create our reducer so I'm just going to go ahead and create a constant for our user and you'll see why in a second again this isn't exactly great practice but just for the sake of making our application look nice and work well for just this simple case it's going to work well okay so that's just our default user and we'll populate these details with the response so when we get our user that's saying go and get our user so here what we actually want to return is we want to return our state so our initial state if you've not seen this before it's called the spread operator and what this means is that we pass in the state object and then anything we pass in beyond that state object will replace anything within that state object so if we were to pass in a sending request of true like we are it will replace the sending request in the state object and we'll get a new object back so it will be immutable which is exactly what we want as remember we don't mutate our state let's pass in our sending request and we'll send that to true we'll pass in our user oh, we don't need to pass in our user this one actually we'll pass in our status of pending dot 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 and we'll pass in our status class to equal pending i'm not going to show you the css as it's just really simple okay the next one we need to do is a case of Turn break. I can't remember what I called these. Uh, user received. So for our success, user received. And oh, we can just copy that line actually. So when we receive our data, we get the data back correctly. I'm going to go ahead and set our user objects dot name to equal some funky ES6 here. Again, if you've not seen this, this is string interpolation in ES6. So it's just the back tick. And then it's dollar curly braces and then you pass in whatever string you want to be interpolated and it's going to be results oh, it's just going to be payload actually because i passed results in earlier it's going to be payload naught dot name dot first for our first name and that actually needs to go there that's going to give us our first name and then we'll pass a space in there copy this because it's exactly the same other than the last name that will give us our user's name our user's email is simply action dot payload zero dot email it's the first element in the array just because we're only requesting one user and our gender we're then going to return sending request to false as obviously our request has been fulfilled We've got our response back, so we're no longer sending our request. Uh, we're going to pass in that user. We're going to have a status of user received. And that class is going to be success. And the final one is error, I believe. So error. And if we get an error, we are simply going to return our state again using that spread operator going to have sending request false going to have status and that will again be some funky es6 string interpolation action dot payload dot message and we're then going to finally pass in the status class of error and i just noticed i spelt success wrong so let's just correct that one Okay, to get this working now, we need to call our render and store.subscribe. Save that, head on to the browser, refresh, and hopefully, when we click this, we should get a new user. Yeah, instead, we've got an error. Cannot read property zero of undefined. The easiest way to find out what's wrong here is let's just pass a response back rather than response.result, as I probably imagine that's wrong. And we've got error again, cannot read name of undefined. So at least our payload is now defined. So we can find our user received action and the payload and it's data dot results. Okay, so I was almost there. So 
response.results refresh and there we go we get a user so when we click the button we get pending you can see that very briefly and then we get the user received and we get some new data and it renders to the screen which is exactly what we want so let's just go ahead and make this error so we're just going to pass in some random junk to that api refresh and we'll get the error message with request failed with status code 404 so that's how we make an asynchronous request with redux actually fairly simple we just need the redux thunk middleware pass that in and we don't have to call that like we do redux logger and then we simply dispatch a function and then within that function we do our xhr request and we dispatch the actions we want and the payloads on those actions if they have them in the next video i'm gonna quickly run through how you would use redux promises and i'm gonna go ahead and change the names of these types because as you saw i forgot and there is a few best practices around this and the redux promises sort of enforces that in a nice way so if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe like and comment and i'll catch you in the next video